Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day. Uh, as, let's just begin this session <clears throat> with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful morning, oh God. Lord, your word teaches us that morning by morning, new mercies we will see. New mercy is new every morning, oh God. We want to thank you for this beautiful time where we can just come together and learn from your word, learn principles from your word that are so relevant to each one of us in every sphere of, of influence that we are in, oh God. We thank you. Lord, I pray that even as we discuss and learn together, that Holy Spirit, you will teach us, you will continue to give us new ideas, strategies, bring new thoughts, revelations, innovations in our hearts and our spirit of God. Lord, we thank you that no matter where we are, no matter what we do, O oh God, uh, that you are always with us, Lord, that you will always lead us and guide us, for you are the shepherd of our soul. We thank you, Lord. We submit this hour into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome once again. Uh, all right. Uh, so before we go into uh, today's session, uh, I know that uh, Prabhakar uh, is here. Uh, he had asked a question yesterday. Uh, Prabhakar, feel free to probably unmute and you can ask your question. Or if you'd like to, you can also post the question on the chat. Okay. Thank you, Prabhakar. Yeah. So the question is, how do you think we can find out what we are good at? What I would do is... What I would do is would ask someone who's close to let me know what you see I'm good at. Is it the correct way? Okay. Um, it, Prabhakar, like, let me answer the first part of your question. How do you think we can find out what we're good at? Now, I, I'm sure uh, we, we studied fulfilling God's purpose. Uh, and in that, we learned that uh, our gifts and our grace, you know, uh, goes together. So, for example, if God has gifted us in certain area, right? God will give us the grace, and God will give us the ability to recognize that you know that place of okay, this is what uh, I am gifted at. Like so, for example, uh, uh, you know, you, you'd like to sing, right? Just an example, you like to sing, right? But you probably somebody. Uh, has never gone on stage or have never sang uh, in the church and never really, you know, uh, anywhere, you know, never really uh, sang or anything. Now, how can I find out that that's what God wants me to do? Right Now, what will happen is, this will also answer your second part of the question, uh, where, you know, uh, would I ask someone who's close to me? What God does is when we are preparing ourselves with our gifts, right? It could be writing, it could be painting. God will open doors so that he will give you an opportunity to express those gifts, right? Now, not always, Prabhakar, is it, you know, uh, the, the doors will open immediately, right? We know that it, sometimes God will make us wait. He takes us through a process of training. Uh, but how do we find out what we're good at is something that, you know, uh, we ourselves will know. Like, so for example, uh, I know I can't dance. It It is not in me, right? It's just not, it cannot be done. I, I know that's not my gift. Uh, then there are certain other things I know I can't do it. It's, it, I mean, even if I try, uh, uh, it's not something that I'm good at. I don't feel the Lord inclining me towards it. Right. Uh, so as you are, you know, uh, God has placed gifts in each one of us. As we continue to exercise or develop in that gift, we will be able to recognize, OK, I think this is what God is leading me to. If it's, for example, painting, you say, OK, I think God wants me to express myself through painting. There's, uh, you know, prophetic dance, worship. Uh, business, uh, public speaking, it's a lot of other things. So uh, as you begin to exercise, you will understand uh, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you, okay, I think this this is something that I can, you know, focus my attention on. I feel that, you know, and you will be comfortable in that gift. 
right uh, uh and and the point of the second question is uh, asking somebody to let you know uh you can do that you can ask somebody uh, you know uh, unless you know they are very close to you maybe your family or a good friend uh, but the best way to uh, you know understand and to know is to remember that people will open doors for you in that you know place or in that uh, gift that you have and how will it happen god will open that door and uh, you don't have to uh, you know worry when will i you know how do i enter this place how do i you know uh, for example if it's painting uh, I'll, i'll share this example of this young man uh, he he liked to paint right so he was always wanting to paint he liked that uh, but of course he he can't just choose painting and you know so his parents made him study do his college do his degree but painting was always something in his heart he pursued his education out of that and he knew that he wanted to do something in painting so he would always you know uh, learn more god opened a door for him people began to recognize his painting but it was not immediately right uh, it took some time right and then people started seeing the way he paints it was something that people like people say okay uh, can we can we buy your paintings can we put it on auction so doors began to open he didn't do anything right? uh, probably he put it on facebook or these uh, but god will unusually open doors for us so provoke uh, to find out what we're good at as we begin to exercise gifts we will understand that okay this is something that i can do uh and secondly you could ask somebody but uh a better way is to trust in the lord and the lord will use people to open doors uh, so it's not like you're going to, you're asking you can ask people opinion but when you trust in the lord the lord will minister to people and god will op- use people to open doors for you and that is the most powerful way uh you know it's wonderful it's it, because you know that this is from god all of a sudden somebody will come and say hey oh, i want you to be the manager of this team you know that hey this is god god has opened this door god has spoken to this other person and given us this door so uh so prabhaka what i encourage you to do is uh you know sometimes we all have multiple gifts right we may be good in music good in teaching good in uh, you know it or technical things and uh, multiple gifts so there's not nothing wrong you can use all of that to build yourself uh, uh, and 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 so it's not like there's only this one thing that god uh, has gifted us we we will have multiple gifts and uh, as you exercise them god will definitely open doors right he will use people he will open doors so i hope that answers your question prabhaka do you have any thoughts on that no no just uh, my question was like what if a person has multiple talents you know multiple okay. gifts that was also you answered thank you so much yeah thanks thanks prabhaka yeah uh, yeah one thing is sometimes it may get uh, confusing right you know when i thought i wanted to start preaching i never thought of worship uh I, i never really thought of it i because i never went for music classes uh it's sort of okay let me learn the word so that i can preach and uh, it was worship was never really in my mind uh, but then you know in bible college there was nobody to lead the worship we had we were a few students about 30 of us uh and i i didn't know much right i just knew a few chords and few songs also um and i never thought that okay this is something that you know i will be leading worship in places but just said, okay so you know i remember uh, pastor jakes uh, our worship pastor he said uh, paul why don't you lead worship in the bible college morning and evening uh so nobody asked i mean i never asked anybody but he said why don't you lead i told him pastor i don't know much whatever little i know i can he said yeah it's all right you can just you know do that then he began to encourage me he said why don't you you know build on this it's something that you can do you can uh, you know build your talent build yourself in this area uh, uh, and then i i didn't know okay am i a worship leader 
am i a preacher am i an evangelist or am i uh, in the it which what am i uh, so so sometimes with all those multiple gifts it may be hard but remember that uh, through every way god will open doors so initially at apc right, i was only leading worship for about i think about 2 years 2 to 2 and a half years i right, only uh, leading worship but uh, but in my heart i always kept thinking i want to share the word you know i love to preach i love to teach the word uh and then i never really shared it with people but you know god just used people and opened doors you know, so all of a sudden there was a need uh, can you go they came and said paul can you go and preach the word here in this place and the door opened right it was not immediate uh but the worship the door for worship was something that just opened up right, which i didn't expect then years later what i really wanted was to share and preach the word that opened years later uh so god will open those uh doors for us and it's wonderful you know when we look back and think of it it's like wow uh, it's so amazing the way the god le- the lord leads us takes us through those seasons and then at the right time in the right way he'll open doors so right uh last week sorry yesterday we uh did chapter 5 competitive advantage and strategy uh we almost finished the chapter uh, uh we came to the last few points uh, be open to unusual doors let me just uh which page we are at okay on your notes we are on page 48 on your notes uh, be open to unusual doors let's just quickly complete this and we go into chapter 6 uh we go to the next point down but not out now there will be times in ministry and in business where we will find failures we will see challenges um i'm sure business every business every organization will go through challenges will see seasons of failures seasons of success again they may see seasons of failures so here's the thing god is teaching us that in, in judges 20 what happened was that uh, i'll just quickly just share that uh, uh, you know, what happened in judges 20 uh, in judges 20 uh, uh, there, there was a there was a the israelites were going against the tribe of benjamite benjamin because there was a problem they were trying to attack the israelites and god tells them you go and fight with the uh, tribe of benjamin right uh, and the first time when the israelites went they lost they came back the second battle the second time they went they lost again and the third time when they went they went with a different strategy it's wonderful to read judges chapter 20 maybe you can read it after the, after your sessions today uh third time when they went god gave them a different strategy and when they went in they won they won the battle so it's a wonderful lesson to learn that sometimes god you know yes we are victorious he he leads us to victory but sometimes we go into battle we may f- fall but god will send us again send us again and then where as he keeps sending us he teaches us okay we learn from our failure so the israelites were down but not out they stood up again the third time they were victorious so it's not only about looking at life's battles but it's about planning strategically how to fight those battles and a winning strategy can make that difference uh the next point is time and chance happen be alert act quick and capture the moment uh yeah in this ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11 I'll just read that Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill but time and ch- chance happened to them all so the writer of ecclesiastes is simply trying to make the readers understand that timing and circumstances are important there are good times there are bad times 
there are good times there are bad times there are good seasons there are bad seasons and we will see both of them whether in an organization or whether in a ministry right now we may think how how do i when will i i see bad times in ministry yes we will you will see bad times in family as well there will be struggles uh so what is required is wisdom to handle both situations right wisdom to handle the good times wisdom to handle the bad times right uh, uh, why do we need wisdom to handle good times because sometimes in our success we may you know do the wrong things in our zeal or passion or our uh, in that moment of success we may feel okay you know i can do anything and we may end up taking up a wrong step so we need wisdom in good times we need wisdom in the difficult challenging times also and so be alert capture the moment when so when good seasons come in enjoy those seasons when difficult seasons come in look to god say god give me wisdom to handle the situation right give me wisdom to know how to take this you know this problem ahead how do i solve this problem right uh, if you are managers or leaders in a team and you see that that within the team there are you know conflicts uh, it's very difficult right very difficult as a manager or a team leader to resolve those conflicts right because it could be personal conflicts it could be out of pride jealousy among them and and sometimes it could be in the ministry i remember this happened once and uh uh two people in the church uh, uh very very genuine god fearing god loving people two members uh one of them came up to me and said uh, i don't like this person if i look at him i don't like him there's something in me that you know uh, just does not go right now i thought to myself this is a problem because he is a wonderful man of god the other person also is a wonderful man we both are good loving you know families but they just the other person doesn't hate him but this man he just doesn't like the other person and it's like how do i solve this uh, there's no reason he's saying i don't know why now i can't say uh, you know i can't tell this uh, elderly gentleman you know you pray and god will uh, make you of course i can do that but it's a it's a problem that needs to be resolved practically also right and so in in the church in ministry there will be plenty of people having different problems different kinds of uh, needs different kinds of conflicts uh, we are not to run away from that but we need to resolve those handle conflicts uh in the organization as well uh handling conflicts uh is is very important making sure that you know everything in the team or in the organization is going well uh that there's no conflicts there's no internal you know uh, hatred among people that people work together as a team so these are things that uh you know are very very important and and it takes wisdom Uh, to handle these situations uh so with this we complete chapter 5 uh, uh i was wanting to complete it yesterday but anyways we'll get into chapter 6 uh but before i get into chapter 6 i would just like to ask uh you know uh how many of us are you know have have started your own ministry uh or how many of us have started your own your pioneer you are the pioneer of your ministry or the pioneer of your business uh i just want to know like uh, how did you maybe you could like to share how did you go about planning and setting things up uh, in the business so yes taisha would you like to share on that hi pastor i am ramon i have a ministry um which god instructed me to start the globe charters international ministry um i started by first doing devotions each morning i would send devotional messages to via text to people i know and they would share then it started gradually growing to whatsapp then i use email 
and then the Lord in, uh, encouraged me to go live and stuff like that. So how I plan is just seeking the Lord and it will just give me different topics. And sometimes I was like, wow, this seem above me. And uh, I've started this now three years and now I am, I am growing and he has allowed to, for me to invite other persons to the platform you know, to minister as well. And I really uh, love what God is doing. And they have their own ministry as well. And it's just um, God just doing, you would just say, invite this person, invite that person. And I will go with, and sometimes I don't have a relationship with them. And I will just go with humility and say, oh God, please let them say yes. And some do, and some really don't have the time. And some said no, but I just say, God, you never run. Even when they say no, he always say, go and ask that one. He provides someone else. So he is God. And he has been faithful to me. And it has not been easy. I have time when I don't manage my time. I get exhausted. And sometimes I say, God, I feel like giving up. I feel like I really can't do this because it's so hard. And sometimes you look and you say, wow these people want to hear some sugar-coated things and they love it and i'm like i can't do that i just cannot do that i cannot i have to have integrity with the word of god i i, I can't do that no i rather do i rather not go on and uh, close my mic and there was a time i decided okay i'm not doing this anymore and the lord gave me a vision and i saw the anointing oil as if it spilled over just spilled mm -hmm. over, wasted. And the Lord said, I'm wasting the anointing. I had to get up, took my tail from between my legs, so to speak, and get back on it. And God has been faithful. So I'm learning better to answer your question. Still getting there because it's not a full time, even though full time meaning you are doing God all the time. But um, so, quote unquote, full time, I do work and, uh, you know, managing my family, doing everything. So I'm I'm trusting God for wisdom and direction. Nice. That's wonderful, Taisha. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Taisha, I just wanted to, I hope I don't mind you ask, don't mind asking, uh, have you set uh, like a vision, a mission, uh, you know, like values and cultures that in place for the ministry? Like if you look ahead, like five years down the line, have you like already set a vision or a mission, uh, like values, culture, and how you want the ministry to be probably five years down the line? Or... Um, yes, I, 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 I did. I've done that and I had to, I especially, I struggled with that. Mm. Um, that was a part I struggled with, um, with, with, um, for a good time. And it took me about, me, honestly, about maybe a year because I, I wrote something and then I said, no, this is not it. And uh, the Lord has allowed it to put it together, the mission, the vision, of and i saw well the lord is the one that gave me the vision really i was at a conference a prayer conference and i just i saw open vision i heard a sound and then in the my ears just clicked and in the middle of the sound i saw a op a, a, a vision open I'm, I'm i'm awake and i'm seeing people in front of me but i'm seeing this this the sky the church it just open and I'm looking up and I see I am leading people, army of people coming from different, different skin color, different, different languages. And they are warring, right? And they are coming to, and I'm leading them to Christ. And they're just an um, uh, army coming together. So I say, I don't understand what is that God. First, I didn't understand. And then I went to him and then he gave me the name globe tractors and i'm like what is that i don't know what is that and i googled it and then i said what is good and then i saw Glo globe tractors as basketball team arlem and then i said i'm not comfortable with that name god because what is that you know this is me you know saying that and then i'm saying couldn't i just name it after myself i seen everybody have that and the lord said 
this is it. So I said, okay, this is what I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll do it. And then I understood the vision is about, you know, life transform- transformation, leading people to Christ, preaching the gospel. You know, it, it's a global thing. It's not limited to where you are geographically. Mm-hmm. And the language you speak, it's limitless. It's it's about the kingdom building, right? right? Thank you so much. Thank you, Tanisha. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's wonderful. May the Lord bless your ministry going further as well. Uh, yes, anybody else who was a uh, pioneer? Uh, anyone else who, who, who probably pioneered a business or you pioneered your, uh, uh, you know, a, a ministry of your own? Anybody else? I'd uh, like to just share maybe some of the challenges or how you went about starting it. Any one of us would like to share? Or maybe if you're if you've been in the IT firm and you you know uh, probably a manager or a higher post, you have people under you, and uh, 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 how did you go about you know? Uh, encouraging, handling conflicts, you know, uh, building a team. Uh, would anyone would like to share that? Uh, this way, I think uh, you were in the IT field. I'm sorry, I'm not really sure what you were doing. Uh, would you like to share something? Uh, I know even Tarun has uh, worked in the IT for a long time. Tarun or Christopher, would you like to share your thoughts? Um, no. uh, in, in fact, Hi, the reason and mission yeah. are very important. Uh, I, I, I totally uh, uh, go with it. In fact, uh, that if even if you want to just plan a strategy, uh, you need to know where you are going from where uh, you uh, you are. So vision vision really helps us. Uh, to understand where are we now and where we are going and mm. uh, that's that's very important and mission is actually uh, connects with the past and tells us like what's the future that we are looking at uh, the moment we know that everything becomes a lot clearer uh, we know what we are pursuing even if you are building a strategy you know that you are building a strategy to to go to a certain place so once mm. you are clear on where you are going uh, the choices that you make are much more easier. True, true. Thank you. Thank you, Tarun. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh, Tarun's been working in the IT for many years. So uh, uh, he was also our uh, service coordinator at APC. Yeah. Uh, so he's got loads of experience in uh, this sector. So anybody else would like to share? Or if not, we can move to Chapter 6. Begin with Chapter I 6. <laughs> I can, uh, I can share the Yes, bit, uh, go, go ahead, Christopher, please. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for me, I mean, I, I've also worked in the, in the IT area. Um, and um, I, uh, um, I I spent some, some years uh, also working abroad. Uh, but when I came back, I mean, I just wanted to share a little bit of um, my last year, my last kind of, kind of work experience. So... For the very first time, actually, I, uh, I I started my own business. Before that, I used to always work for uh, uh, you know for um, uh, companies, and um, I had this, um, this sort of uh, uh, you know real uh, kind of call to start my own business, and uh, um, I think definitely I had um, uh, you know. Um, Definitely got in, in the in the mix, you know, when I when I when I started the business, and uh, even the name of the business was, uh, you know, the, my my company name was was a, a reference, you know, from from the Bible, and um, uh, so I uh, I'm just looking back because uh, right now I I, I close on the business, but um, I ran it for about three years, and uh, looking back, you know, when I started to go. Uh, I had uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, I need to, you know, again, you know, put down what I what I want to do in a in a in a business plan and coming, you know, coming from a corporate uh, environment uh, that I thought was was very important. And um, business plan also had, you know, components of 
position and ambition. Uh, but I mean, to cut a cut a long story short, I think um, it's it's very important to you not know, keep going back to that vision and ambition. And uh, sometimes it may need some you know, little bit of tweaking, little bit of reworking. Uh, also, to go back to the business to the business plan and see you know where we where I where, you know where the, uh, you are. And um, I I looking back, I think that there was a time when I was really caught up in the you know in the, in the operational part of the business. And this was actually uh, I I was a you know like a, a, a proprietor, so I um, I was doing this by myself. I didn't have a business partner. So, you know, you get caught up in the operational part of the business, and then you keep, you know, you sort of you know, get um, uh, get slightly away from, you know, the, the vision, the mission. And um, uh, I think there was there was definitely a time where I uh, I uh, you know, moved away from there. And um, I think it's very important to you know, keep keep looking at it, really looking at it, and also asking for God's guidance to uh, you know to um, to see where uh, you know, the uh, some of the mission, you know, mm-hmm. how things are uh, need to be done to achieve the vision uh, needs to be, uh, you know, reworked. Uh, and uh, because this was a, this was kind of my my first business venture, uh, I was doing this by myself, and uh, I I think I learned every single day. I learned something new uh, in the business, and that too doing business in uh, in India, which is which is quite uh, quite challenging. So uh, uh, looking back, I think um, it's very important to keep going back to the to the vision, going back to the mission, going back to the business plan, and you know keep seeking God's uh, guidance on uh, on uh, you know ensuring that uh, things are are on track. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, the track that one is on needs to be uh, you know uh, changed, and uh, you know the direction needs to change. So again, God definitely will uh, definitely uh, uh, need to be uh, part of that uh, decision. Yeah. So that otherwise, just share that with you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christopher. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Both Tarun and Christopher share that. You know, it's so important to have that vision, going back to it every now and then. And uh, uh, you know, uh, I think all of us, all of us. Uh, uh, must remember that uh, we have to go back to the vision every now and then remind ourselves that hey this is what I'm doing thank you Tarun for sharing it on the chat as well uh, for vision mission values and strategies all right uh, we'll go to chapter six uh, maybe coming weeks onwards we'll just leave some time open because you know uh, I feel that we need to interact as well because it's only me talking uh, let's get into chapter six we we'll leave time open from next week onwards for all of us to share our thoughts as well so chapter six is organizational structure and design structure and design is something that is very important in an organization right imagine an organization with no structure uh, it's all going to be haywire, right? It's going to be chaos, right? Uh, and there's a reason for structure and design. Uh, structure is important because we know that you know in the in the market or in the uh, what's happening around us globally, things keep changing, right? So we need to adapt to those changes as well. When you also uh, look on the ministry side. The way ministry is done is not the same as what we were doing 10 years before. So things change. Ministry changes, the way we do ministry, market conditions change. And structures help us to decipher or to to re- recognize what is happening in the market. right? And it eliminates uh, bottlenecks. Getting a right structure and a right design in an organization is key. Now, the moment you get a right structure, okay, this is how my organization is going to look. There's going to be a leader under the main the main leader. There's going to be two more, uh, you know, uh, co-leaders, and then those two co-leaders will have ten people each. What are we doing? We're creating a structure, and then there, there's design. But when we create this structure and we have the right people in those positions, then you have an organization that's ready to win. It could be something small, the organization, 
could be something that you yourself alone are starting with about three people. But when you have a structure in mind and in place, you know what, uh, what, what you're going to do. You know that, okay, further on, this is how we're going to succeed. Uh, I was reminded of, uh, uh, you know, I, I heard about this, you know, once uh, the initial services of uh, APC, APC Church started in 2001. And uh, one of my uh, interactions with pastor, pastor was sharing that in the first service of APC, 2001, there were about eight people uh, who were there in the church. And pastor wrote down uh, uh, on a sheet of paper, he wrote down, uh, volunteers needed, right? Uh, opening for volunteers. And he wrote down sound and setup team, worship team, uh, offering team. And he wrote down about six, seven teams. There were only eight people in that, in the first service. He wrote about seven teams and he said, these are the openings for volunteers. And I was amazed at the, it was already, it's already planned inside. Everything is planned. Okay, I want to see myself this way in the years to come. There was structure already set in place on service number one, first service of APC. Why? Because structure will help you walk in order. Getting the right people in the team will going to make your organization win. Let's look at a few points of why structure is important. Structure, order, and design are godly virtues. First Corinthians 14, 33 and 40. Could one of us please read that? First Corinthians 14, 33 and 40. First Corinthians 14, 33, 40. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, let all things be done decently and in order. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinas. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So God is a God of structure. He's a God of design. He's a God of order. What we see around us, creation, is his design. Everything is in order. There's a reason why the earth is you know, tilted. There's a reason why things, there's day and night. There's a reason why there's you know, uh, so much of order. Imagine if you uh, look at the, uh, you know, the, I'm not too well versed in scientific things, but if you look at the, uh, you know, the things that are happening in the atmosphere, uh, you know, these billions of, you know, f comets or, uh, you know, planets, the, the things that are moving around that can cause destruction. Why is it that none of it is happening, uh, is coming and, you know, just hitting the earth and the earth just, because, there's a design, there's a structure. God has designed it. There's order in everything. God instituted the church. God instituted marriage and family. And in both of them, God instituted uh, an established order and design. So in everything that we do, there needs to be order and design and structure why? Because it brings peace, it brings harmony, and there is fulfillment of purpose. What we want to do is accomplished. Right? Let's look at a small example. If we want to learn an instrument, we can't just say, okay, I will learn and, you know, uh, just take some random books and stuff. No. There needs to be a structure in learning. Right, uh, you know, when I was learning the guitar, nobody was there to teach me, so I would buy heart chords. I say, okay, this is how you play the. World. It's by hearted. And years later, I realized, hey, I've learned music the wrong way. I'm supposed to. So I went back. I said, okay, let me learn it the right way, in the structure, in an orderly pattern, so that I know why I'm playing this chord. Right? It's not about playing the chord G, but why am I playing it? Uh, what is the purpose of playing it? Right? Uh, and so God, when he has designed structure, order and design, 
God is a God of wisdom. And when we create a structure and order and design, we are displaying God's wisdom. It will help us fulfill the purpose that God has for us. Right? Uh, structure is very, very important. Order, orderly manner, working in an orderly manner. You know, uh, right. So uh, we were talking about uh, align organizational structure to strategy. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Uh, a voice coming through? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So align align organizational structure to strategy. Now you have a structure, align that structure to the strategy that you had already made earlier on. Let's read Numbers chapter 1, verse 52. It says, The rest of the Israelites shall, shet, shall set up camp company by company, each man with his own group and under his own banner. Numbers 2.34 So the people of Israel did everything the Lord had commanded Moses. They camped each under his own banner and they marched each with his own clan. Right. We'll go on to read Numbers 10, 13, and 14. They began to march at the command of the Lord through Moses. And each time they moved, they were in the same order. Those under the banner of the division led by the tribe of Judah started out first, company by company, with Nasun, son of Amanadab, in command. Now, when we read this Numbers, it is very interesting. You know, sometimes initially I thought Numbers is all about you know, just people. No, it is. We see God's structure in place. What does He tell the people of Israel? Now you all are in the desert. He doesn't say, "Okay, just follow Moses wherever he's going." Just go. No, God doesn't do that. What does He say? He says, "Okay, we've got twelve tribes. All twelve tribes will have twelve one leader each, and those leaders will report to Moses." Right now. When you're camping, you're going to, there's going to be the tabernacle. The tabernacle has four corners. So what you're going to do is you'll have three tribes in each corner. They will camp in each corner. So you've got three, 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 and three. It makes it 12 tribes. right? Now, he, God also instructs them on which tribe should be at which place of the tabernacle. right? So if you picture the you know, the whole exodus coming out, uh, they're in the desert. What they would do is the tabernacle is at the middle and around that they would camp. So it was not like, you know, they would say the tribe of uh, uh, any tribe can go and just, you know, uh, okay, there's shade here. Let me uh, uh, camp here. No. Three, the God instructed three from each place, each tribe, all four sides, right? And they were also given proper directions on how to move it was not like okay you know okay it's time to go let's go no they got up god said okay first these three tribes will go this side of the tabernacle second side will go then there was order there was design it was wonderful because imagine you've got like uh, uh 600 000 people and moses is there joshua is there Imagine they had to handle all these people. But God so wonderfully, you know, orchestrated the whole thing. He said, make sure when you move, you move in your tribes. And three tribes in a pair. Right? So you got three, 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 three. And and God very clearly gave them the directions. And when you read on in numbers, it's wonderful. Uh, the leaders in each tribe were given trumpets, right? And those trumpets uh there were different trumpets. One trumpet was uh, blown when, you know, uh, which sounded the leaders of the 12 tribes were called. Right? It was to alert them. Okay, the leaders of the 12 tribes are needed. Another trumpet was to alert the, uh, the, the people of Israel that it's time to move. Another trumpet sound was, okay, it's time to pause. We stop here. We settle here for some time. Right? So all of this, God designed it in such a beautiful way, right? The entire organizational structure had one strategy. What is it? We will work towards going into the promised land. 
and they didn't look at the promised land and start running inside no they walked in in an organized structural manner you know when we read the book of uh, uh i think it is uh, Uh, in in Ezekiel chapter one, Ezekiel chapter one, you see the whole picture of the throne room of God, and it's wonderful. You know, uh, when we do a little bit of a study on that, uh, you know, each tribe they have a symbol of, uh, and those symbols are like, for example, a lion, a bear. Uh, so each tribe had a symbol, and after certain studies, it showed that when God told the people. of israel to camp in certain corners the tribes are to camp in those certain corners the aerial view showed ezekiel chapter 1 which was the throne room of god which had the lion the bear the eagle and god thought about that that structure was set in place uh the uh, and and each as each tribe had a leader when all three tribes at one place they again had another leader right and and so we saw that it was very very effectively done they could walk of course they disobeyed they did all of that but the structure of the way they walked into the promised land was done in a very good way organized way we'll do one more point and then we'll close organizational design affects strategic capability and sustainability which means the the organization the design of an organization will prove whether it's long lasting or not right let's read uh first chronicles chapter 16 and verse 4 first chronicles 16 verse 4 and 37 yes good one of us please go ahead read that first chronicles 4 16 sorry first chronicles chapter 16 4 and 37 sorry okay i'll i'll just read that then david assigned some of the levites to the chest of god to lead worship to intercede give thanks and praise the god of israel david left asap and his co-workers with the chest of the covenant of god and in charge of the work of worship they were responsible for the needs of worship around the clock now i'll just share this and we'll close david once he became the king the first thing he did is he took the ark of the covenant and the ark of the covenant was god's symbol he brought it and he he placed it in jerusalem and he had that ark of the covenant placed under a tent now what he told the people of israel was this place has the presence of god so he desired that there needs to be worship for 24 hours round the clock worship so david just didn't say it and stop at it now as a leader david did something wonderful he chose 4000 people to look after this work to attend to the tabernacle 4000 musicians 288 prophetic singers now that group was organized into 24 smaller units right so 20 4000 people were divided into 24 smaller units and then those 24 units were divided into smaller teams of musicians and singers now you see the structure there 4000 he chose 4000 he made it into 24 smaller units those 24 smaller units in each unit there were singers and musicians so for example one day they would get up and say okay tomorrow is our unit to look after the night worship so they would go look after the night worship so that way he was able to ensure that worship was happening 24/7 in front of the tabernacle 4000 people 288 prophetic singers 24 teams and each unit or 24 units had teams in that unit and they would go and make sure that all round the clock there was worship and because of this excellent organization and structure that david did the worship in the tabernacle went on for 
33 years 33 years david's this worship team there was 24/7 worship for 33 years it didn't dissolve it sustained for 33 years so we see that when you have structure there's sustainability right uh, so we will stop here we will pick up from next week sorry about the uh, hindrance with the internet uh, no. Anyways, right, so let's close uh, in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you, Lord, for this time of learning. Uh, and Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with the students, even as they learn. And, uh, Lord, you know, equip themselves that you will teach and minister to them, Lord. Use them for your glory, Father. We bless them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week. God bless.